work it, make it, do it, makes us. All right, good afternoon. <clears throat> Welcome to Modules in One Lesson. My name is Mark Reinhold. I work on Java, among other things. Uh, so this is a, a skim on the surface of, of the module system and the, and the modular platform, the modular, modular JDK and all of that. Um, I, I'm going to attempt to show you in, in real time some highlights. What, it, what does it mean to create a module? Uh, how, how do you make one module depend upon another? Uh, show you how deeply integrated the module system is into the platform. Um, and along the way, show you a few other things that are maybe aren't that tightly related to the module system, but they're cool features in Java 9 that uh, I, th I think a lot, a lot of people don't yet know about. Um, so I'll hi highlight those as well. And hopefully at the end, we'll have some time for questions. So let's get going with our one lesson here. So I'm here in, uh, in a shell. I'm, you know, one, of the, one of the curses of working on the JDK itself is you pretty much have to live on, on the command line much of the time because when you're working on the next version of the platform, the old versions of the IDEs don't yet support the new stuff that you're working on. I mean, if you're, if you're just doing a new library, yeah, sure, you might, you, you, you might be fine. But when you're, when you're doing deep surgery on the libraries and the virtual machine and changing the language, then you're toast. So it's, it's back to the command line for you, and that's kind of where we live a lot of the time. So I've got a, 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 JV, a, a, a Java 9 build here, JDK 9 build. I can show you what the version is. Um, I built this just a couple of days ago, so it's, it's, the, it's the latest version of, of the Jigsaw Jake prototype. Um, for a while, Jake was way ahead of, of, of the actual JDK 9 code. These days, it's, it's really pretty close. It runs a little bit of head, and then we, then we bake things and run them through a bunch of tests and then merge them in JDK 9 mainline. Of course, we're trying to be towards the end of the release, so <laughs> those differences are really, really small these days. Anyway, that's, that's, that's the version that we're running. Uh, and to start off, I uh, just have a really trivial application here. Um, <clears throat> it's it's hello world whoa the, the the original but it's a bit but it's a little bit different so it's a hello world um, you know inspired by our our brethren in the, in the land of JavaScript we have a left pad uh, method here uh, kind of does the obvious uh, and and the main method takes uh, takes it takes some some input constructs a, a hello world string and left pads it and prints it out so. Pretty simple. Let's let's just do the normal old compilation thing here. Um, let me see if I remember how to how to do this. What do we got? We got make uh, random other stuff. Actually, before we get to that, I need to show you a couple of other things. So one is J shell. How many people have heard of J shell? How many people have played played with J shell? Okay, J shell's cool. Try it out. So J shell. Welcome to J shell. What can you do in JShell? Well, you can you can you can type expressions. It does math, you know, big deal. You can assign variables. Ooh. Um, you can ask it to do tab completion on the variable x. Well, it's an instance of the string class, and it goes off to the string class and asks, well, what methods are here? You can then do do completion on methods. Here it tells me that. Oh, there are actually two overloads. One th there's one that takes a, a single argument, another that takes two arguments. Press tab again to see documentation. And what does it do? It shows you a summary of the Java doc right there in the tool. So x dot substring two comma, say, uh, one comma three, and we get, ooh. So, okay, so that, Tiny, tiny intro to, to J show. So, we, so we've got the string variable x. What else can we ask about x? Well, we can ask what its class is. We can ask its class now what module is it in. Every class in the module system, every class in the JDK now is in a specific module. And this class Java Lang string is in the module called Java Base, which contains the foundation of the system, the fundamental stuff. Um, and, and that module object, we can ask what its class is. It's an instance of a brand new type, a new, new type in the Java Lang package called module, which is the reflective runtime view of 
what a module is. So it's, it really is wired pretty, pretty deeply in. We can look at some other classes. Let's import java.sql into our JShell environment, and we'll make a timestamp, say. Timestamp of zero. Whoop. Jeez, Mark. Um, JShell, thankfully, has history and tab completion, just like any, any reasonable shell. So we can ask what T's class is and its module. Java.sql has its own module. It's a different thing. If you just have, have the base module, you won't have any of the SQL types. If, you, if you're writing a modular uh, ap application and you need to use SQL, then you need to make sure that somewhere along the line, the, the module that contains your code requires SQL. And we'll, we'll see more about that later. Alrighty. So that's JShell. Um, what else? Oh, right. So as I, as I said this morning, there, there, there are lot, there's lots of, of, of confusion I see about you know, people thinking, oh, well, Java 9 is not going to run old code. I have to convert everything, everything into modules. Or there are lots of incompatibilities because they, they're hiding internal cat classes inside of modules and stuff like that. So just to, to, to make a point here, I have here Swing set 2.jar. Any, any, anybody remember the swing set demo back in the old days when swing was a thing? Yeah, so, so swing, swing set 2, you know, it's, it's the mother of all swing demos. It demos every swing component in every possible mode. Uh, this is the exact jar file from JDK 5 GA, dated 2004. Um, this jar file is a teenager. Java, <laughs> not JSR, yeah, right. Swing set 2.jar, JDK 9 build, module system, everything, and but, yep, it, it works. All that stuff is there. We've got you know, the spaceman, the, the, the kids, oh, all, all the babies that were born when Swing was developed in the early days. They're like off in college now, you know. Okay, so there, there is actually a lot of compatibility in 9. It's not as bad as you may have heard. Yes, there are issues, but there are issues with every major platform release, because we have to be able to move the platform forward. All right, so now let's go back to our, our hello thing. So we've got this little guy here, main.java. Main let's compile it. Java C dash D classes, da da da. Uh, or source, or da 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 da. I love, I love tab completion. OK, we do that, jar it up in the usual way. Um, let's put this in a lib directory. Um, jar. Dot. Whoop. I keep typing that. It's just like some Freudian thing. Um, org dot open JDK. And boom, it works. And we can type. The you know, arguments. <clears throat> and it left pads the string. OK, big deal, Mark. You just made a jar file. This is like Java 101. Why are you wasting our time on this? Um, let's make a little change. We will convert this into a trivial module. How do we do that? Well, first, uh, crank up my favorite IDE namely Emacs. Here's, here's, the, here's that main class. What we do is, so this main class is down in its, in its package directory, org, org slash openjdk slash hello. Uh, we're going to put the, a, the new file called module info at the root. Doesn't go in any particular package directory. So but mo module info files are a new thing. Uh, the, 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 these, is, these are where module declarations go. Module declarations are part of the language. They're, they're baked in pretty deeply. To make a module, you give it a name. Org.openjdk hello. Um, this module doesn't need any other modules. Actually, it needs the base mod module. But since every module needs the base module, except for the base module, we actually don't need to say that. You can if you want, but it 
adds no value. So we'll just do that. We've got a module info. This, this name's our module. Um, and now let's compile that again. LS classes, okay, cool. Uh, we jar that up, whoops. Now, what's in hello.jar now? Um, we've got module info.class. Module info.java file is compiled by the compiler into module info.class file. You can, Java, you can run it through Java P. I'll just use the classes directory here, and it tells you, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what we expected. The requires base was inserted helpfully by the compiler. Um, this this hello.jar, you, you can actually run it as a, on, on the class path, and the module info file is ignored. So just as I ran it on the class path before, I can do so again. But I can also treat that lib directory as a new thing, the module path. The module path is where you put actual modules, you know, jar files that have module infos in them, um, uh, although there, you know, there are details that I'll get, it, get, in, get into in, in my second talk tomorrow. So Java module path lib, uh, I'm gonna tell it what module I want to run. JDK, hello. And I need to tell it what class in that um, module to run, and that is main. Now, Okay, big deal, but it, but it is, is sort of the first baby step to, we, we just took that, sim that simple Hello World app and it's now a module uh, and, and now we can get going and do some more interesting things. Um, I, 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 there, there, there are lot, lots of other questions we can ask about it in, in, its, in its life as a module. So we, could, we, can, ask, we can ask the runtime system, okay, look, look at the module path and describe a module for me. And here it's printing out the runtimes view of, of what that module is. Uh, it's saying, saying that it requires java.base. That was mandated by the language spec. It contains a package, org.openjdk hello. And of course, its name is org.openjdk.hello. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, OK. So moving along, uh, j just to make, to make life simpler, I'm going to make an entry point I mean, we, we've, we've, enhanced, we've enhanced the poor old jar tool quite a bit in this release uh, with all kinds of convenient things, uh, such as making, uh, specifying entry points. And in, in the module system, uh, the entry point for a module is actually recorded in the module info.class file. And now to run that, I don't need to specify the class name anymore because there's now a main class associated with the module. And if I ask it to describe that module, it will tell me uh, well, no, I used to t it should tell me what the main class is. Oh, there's a little bug. Okay, what, a bug? No! All right, so, we've got, we've got this really simple module, we've got a module info, we've got a main, a, a, a main.java. Let's do refactoring. Refactoring is always fun, right? So we're gonna refactor this into two modules, right? Since, since you know, again, we, we, you know, we know from, from, from experience in the JavaScript world, leftpad really needs to be its own module. So we're going to put left pad in, in its own module um, and have, have the hello world module depend on that module. So we'll see how module dependencies and how, how exports work. So let's, let's do some surgery. For, uh, first, we've got to rearrange some of, the, some of this, these directories here. Um, let's, uh, let's just arm classes. We're going to rename source to org.openjdk. Hello. Uh, we're going to make a new source directory. We're going to move org open JDK hello, okay, hello in, into that. Um, and we're going to put some, some new stuff in there. So in a modular source tree, every module gets its own directory inside of which you find a, a, a normal old package hierarchy. So that module info.java is right under the directory whose name is the, na the entire name of the module. And yeah, there's a bit of redundancy here because the name of the module is the same name as its principal, in this case, only package. Um, 
but there you go. It, 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 is, the, it is the most sensible way to name, to name modules. You pick, pick, them, pick the main package inside, and that's the name of, name of your modules. Please use reverse DNS. It's just saner. All right. So let's ditch that. Um, okay, so we've got this. Let's say... Wait, so we're, so we're, gonna, we're gonna, for, for, sorry, first let's, re, let's refactor the main method, the main class, rather. We're gonna take this out, the left pad, we're gonna make a whole new module, org.openjdk.txt, org, openjdk, text, uh, let's say pattern.java. Here we go, package. Public class patter. Let's make this public. Leave it static, just keep life simple. Now, we need a module info for this text guy, and that's gonna go, where's it gonna go? Right here, in the root of the module that this particular module's package hierarchy. So a module gets a name. Whoops. Mm. There we go. Org.openjdk.txt. Now, they're they're they're. High, high level, there are three fundamental things about a module. A module has a name. Um, it has some number of exported packages, maybe zero. Uh, and it has some other modules upon which it depends, maybe just Java.base, Java which is what you get by default. So the text module is going to, is, is creating an API for use by other modules, so it needs to export its, its principal package. So we write exports, org.openjdk.txt. Um, it only needs java.base, so we don't need to say that here. Uh, and now we ought to be able to compile the text module. Uh, let me make sure. Right. Do, 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 do. Or, I'll just cheat here. Right, let's draw that up. There's no main class here. Uh, oh, oh dear. I know. Make the directory first. Jar should really do that for you. Okay, so we've got the class. We've got the classes. We've got the lib. Here's text.jar. Got, got its module info. Now we can't run that because there's no because there, there's no no main. But now we can compile the hello module, which we first have to edit. So remember, the fundamental things about a module: it has a name, it has exports, and it has to say what it requires. And now the hello module is going to require org.openjdk. Dot text, not not the package, but the module which happens to have that pa that package of the same name. All right, let's compile that. Mm, now, let's save our work first, Mark. Module not found, org open JDK text. I didn't tell the compiler where to fi find the text module that we already compiled. So let's tell the compiler that. The compiler takes a module path, just like the runtime takes a module path. Oh, I cannot find symbol. Oh, yeah, that's. I love static typing. Patter.leftpad. I love static typing, really I do. Import org.openjdk text pattern. 
Okay, what have we got in our lib directory? Well, no, first you have to make the jar mark, come on. Lib directory, two jar files. We can now run Oh, I forgot the main. Oh, let me just do this. Hello world. And now it, it's actually assembling at runtime. It, it, gets the, it gets the text module, instantiates that. It gets the hello module, instantiates that, hooks them up, and it's running in modular form. So fidelity is, is really important. Fidelity across phases. We've tried um, as much as possible to make uh, I mean, not just mundane things like the command line options, although it's, the fidelity there is useful too, but the model system works as much as possible the same way at compile time as it does at runtime. So you know, er errors are detected <coughs> in the same way, more or less, in, in, in both phases, and the error messages are very similar. So for example, um, in the lib directory, suppose I remove libtext.jar. Well, we, act, we actually already saw an example of this, but I'll, I'll just run through it again. If I, if, I, if I now try to compile the hello module, even though I've get a, given it a module path, it says module not found, work open JDK text, because that jar file just isn't there. If I try to run the hello module, I get a similar message, module org open JDK text not found. It's not in the lib directory. So you know, the, the, this, this is one of, the, one of the, the great things about reliable configuration. It's not, it's reported right away if something is missing. It's not like, it's not like the class path where if something is missing, you don't discover it until your application's been up and running for hours or days. You know right away when something is missing. Okay, let's just recompile. Text module, get that back back into place. Let's go go into our requires. Hmm. So here here here's the here's the module info for for the hello module. What if what happens if we comment out this requires? Can we compile it? What do you think? Oh, that's weird. Oh no, because it's a little, the little, hmm. it was confused by the classes directory. Yep, there we go. Package org open JDK text does not exist um, because we didn't require the right thing. So the compiler knows all about that too. Let's recompile. Um, Okay, there, 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 there are a variety, variety of, of other errors and, uh, errors, and another interesting one is if you fail to export something. So this is exported API. I could comment this out, recompile, the compiler would catch it. I could try to run it at runtime, and the runtime system would catch it as well. All right, so en enough, of, enough of that little, little demo. So the JDK is, you know, we've, 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 we've used this module system to decompose it into a set of modules. Um, you can, if you just type java.list modules, you'll get the entire list. Um, there are quite a lot of them. Woo, let's page that. Uh, many of them, they start with the, the letters J-A-V-A -A dot because they're part of the Java SE platform. Uh, so they're, you know, they're official, they're blessed by the, by the JCP and all that, other, all, all that other good stuff. There are a bunch of other modules. They start with JDK dot because they're they're JDK specific. Some of them are internal. They don't export any APIs outside of the JDK. Some of them are parts of the JDK that you could actually write code against. They have APIs that are, say, that are supported in, in some sense, but they're, they're not part of the standard. So if you get a JDK from, from, some, you know, from somewhere else, it might not have it. There are quite a few modules, 75, 75 modules. Um, only, only 28, 28 of them are, are so-called so standard modules. And they're all on a graph, right? We, we, you've got modules with dependence relationships. You can make a graph, and here's the graph. 
So quick, quick tour, we've got Java, Java base at the bottom. Um, there, there, it, it, if you look at it's kind of the bottom part of the slide, many of these things are, you know, you, you, can, you can use stuff down here without using stuff up top, right? Uh, there is a, there's a module called java.se, which gets you um, all of the APIs that are part of Java SE and not part of Java EE. Uh, there's a module way at the top called java.se.ee, which includes the union. So if you really want everything that was in Java 8, inclu including all the EE stuff, then you need to, to, use, to use that module. Otherwise, Java SE is a somewhat trimmed down set. So bases down here, it's got Java Lang object, Java Lang string, um, IO, Lang, util, net, a bunch of security stuff. And there are all these other modules sitting on top. And then all the JDK modules. Many of the JDK modules uh, pr uh, contain service providers that get, get hooked up to the Java, uh, the Java modules through the service mechanism. So w l looking at this graph, what do you notice about it? Anything? Remember graph theory 101? Sorry? It's a DAG. There are no cycles. Right, so this module system doesn't allow cycles. That's a little bit of a controver controversial decision, but it doesn't allow cycles because cycles in module graphs are generally a really bad practice, and it's not just my personal opinion. Um, experts in, in, in the field have been advocating this for, for quite a while. So yeah, no, no cycles. You know, there are ways to induce cycles at runtime if you really need to through the reflection API. Uh, but by default, cycles are, are just not a thing. Another th cool thing, and this is getting a, a little, little teeny bit off track again, but I'd love to show it. Uh, Javadoc knows about modules now. So the main Javadoc page is no longer um, an in, a near infinite list of packages. It's actually a, structured as a list of modules. You know, there, there's there's Java.base, but you can scroll down and you see all of the Java ones first and then eventually some JDK ones that have supported APIs show up. Uh, and, and one of the cool things about this, uh, about the Javadoc enhancements is you can go into a module and the main page for a module contains a partial module graph. So it shows you right there visually, if you use Corba, then you're also going to get RMI, you're also going to get desktop, <coughs> because Corba, uh, and, and desktop pulls in data transfer and XML, and of course everything ultimately depends on java.base somehow. Uh, so, so these little graphs are, are really handy in the Java, Javadoc to let you get a sense of, of what's going on. Um, another uh, really you know, quick ad for, for ultra cool feature in Javadoc, Javadoc has built-in search now. JavaScript is good for something. So if I wanna see like Java, what does the Java Lang module API look like, I just type that and boom, I'm there. You don't have to go groveling through trees and clicking left, right, and everywhere. You can just search and there you go. So that's pretty slick. Okay, so there we go. One last thing I'd like to show you is, is linking. So in Java 9, as, as, as part of Jigsaw, we've added a thing that, that Java has never had and that is a linker. You know, C's you know, always had linkers, right? Why didn't Java have a linker? Well, because Java is predominantly, uh, is, is, is a very dynamic language in terms of its runtime behavior. Uh, the, the module system imposes, just, is designed to impose just enough um, static constraints that we can do linking. This is, one, this is one reason why it's not, you know, it's not completely, totally lazy, at least not by default. So linking le lets us deliver the JDK as a bunch of module artifacts, and you can link custom images that contain just the modules that you need, and you know, per perhaps together with your own code. So here's, this is the JDK I've been using. It's got a, you know, a bin directory and a lib directory and legal and other stuff. Um, there's no rt.jar in there, by the way. The jmods directory contains a bunch of jmod files. And there's one of these files for each 
each Java or JDK module in the system. So there are 75 of these guys. So JMOD is a for, is, is they're, they're not jar files. JMOD is a different format. It's specific to the JDK. It's sort of jar files on steroids because for the JDK itself, we have to be able to handle you know, th things like native code and legal notices and, and configuration files and lots of other stuff. Um, and you just can't, there's no way to take an ordinary jar file and mash that in in a way that, that actually makes sense. So, so JMODs, they are, they are based on the zip format like jar. Um, but they're, they're JDK specific, at least for now. Maybe they'll get standardized later if, if there's a reason to do that later on. Anyway, given, given that directory full of JMOD files, you can run this new tool called JLink, obviously enough. You give it a module path. You tell it what, uh, what modules you want. You, you, you always have to tell JLink, JLink where to start. Um, we're just, to start, we're just going just to make a simple image that has only the base module in it. And we'll put that in, let's say, JRE. Um, yeah, that should work. All right, it goes off and thinks for a while. And now we have our own custom JRE. Here's the size of the entire JDK 9 build I've been working with, 553 megabytes. Um, Here's the size of the JRE that I just made. It's only 48 megabytes. It's got a bin directory, but it doesn't have much in it, Java and, well, key tool, because that part of the security stuff is in the base module. Um, I, I can run this. I can list the modules in it. Woohoo! all it has is the base module. OK, we can go, we can go further than this. Uh, we can let, let's let's run lib. Let's run our hello module. Uh, oh. That's sad. Well, anyway, that should work. But it's not working, and I'm not going to debug it in real time. Um, all right, so we've got these, these two JREs. Another cool thing JLink can do is it can compress. So if you care more about space than you care about time, there are additional options we can use. Uh, let's say compress compression. Two is the highest. We're going to use a minimal VM, uh, and we're going to strip debug symbols. What am I doing? Ah. And we better put that somewhere else, because that will conflict. So this is going to do some compression. It'll strip, sh strip things. It'll use a stripped-down virtual machine that doesn't have things like JVMTI in it, so you can't monitor it remotely. But you know, maybe we're going to stick this on a small device, and that doesn't matter. So it just goes off, and it does some work. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. And our compressed area is only 15 megs. But it, it'll run. It's, it's got, got Java base in it, the whole deal. Um, and there you are. OK, so that's the demo so far. Um, we've got about 15 minutes left for questions. So if people would like to ask questions, that's great. Uh, there's, there's lots of information available. Um, there are, the, the, the Jigsaw is this enormous project that's been going on for quite a few years. Uh, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six JEPs. Uh, in, in OpenJDK, an entire JSR in the Java community process. Uh, if you go to openjdk.java.net slash project slash jigsaw, you can find pretty much all the information that we have uh, on it. Um, this URL is out of date. Sorry, it should, it should just say jdk.java.net, jdk9.java.net. Well, it will redirect to the right place. Um, we, we, pu we publish the JDK9 uh, early access build every week. 
Uh, we publish the jigsaw early access build uh, every build. So it's, you know, whenever there is a, when it, when it, whenever there are changes in the jigsaw specific forest, uh, those builds show up. Um, release date, well, the, the schedule, current schedule says July 27th, but with the drama earlier this week, I would say that release date is in doubt. I have, I don't know when the release will be. Hopefully it will be fairly soon. Don't believe a word I have said. I work for Oracle. <laughs> Questions, please. Is, is there a hand mic around or? Great. Or if you're shy, if you're shy feel free to, to tweet me, M. Reinhold. That'll work too. Hello? Uh, over here? Yes, hi. So, is, there an, is there an equivalent to the class loader functionality for modules for like dynamically generating classes in a module or, or something like that? Is there equivalent to the class loader function? I'm not sure. So, so, so the, the module system actually cares very little about class loaders. And that, that's intentional as, as a, as a, in, in order to achieve good compatibility. There are lots of applications out there that do lots of crazy things with class loaders, uh, and we want them to be able to leverage the mo module system uh, you know, as, as well as, as just the platform itself. So is your question, can you, can you create a module, can, can you load a module dynamically after the system is started up? Uh, well, do anything dynamic, right? Currently I can see that like if a module contains a static set of classes, then obviously things work. But if you right. want to uh, download those classes at runtime from somewhere or you know define them in any no, kind there, of so so way. so there 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 there's definitely provision for dynamic behavior. It's not as dynamic as OSGI in that it's not a sort of sea of modules that can come and go at any time in a in a completely dynamic way. Uh, instead, in order to get a, to get a handle on the dynamism, so that we can do things like linking, uh, and also report errors earlier in time rather than later, um, there's a concept of layers. So modules can be essentially stacked in in groups called layers. Uh, when you know, one layer, you know, la layers are, are hierarchical. Uh, so layers uh, layers can also be in a directed acyclic graph. If you if you just start up the system by default, you get the boot layer. That's where all the, all the application modules from the module path will be loaded, and that's where all the platform modules are loaded. But if you're, if you're doing something advanced, you're, you're creating, you, you have an application that, has, say, has a plugin API, and you, and you load user modules as, as plugins to your framework or something, then you can spin up a layer to load plugin modules, you know, subgraphs of plugin modules that relate to the module graph that's in the lower layers. So there's, there's mechanism for all of that, and that's, you know, and that's intended to handle the dynamic cases. Thank you. Uh, where are we on things like versioning? I, I'm um, sorry, hold it closer. Uh, to your so, mind. where are we on things like versioning? So, um, you know, obviously, part of our class path hell at the moment is different, differing versions. Uh, you know, I'm sure none of us here change our public APIs, but once in a while, that seems to happen. Right. Uh, so, I need to stand here so I can hear you. <laughs> so, where, where where are we on versioning? Yeah. So, um, you know, so uh, you know, uh, I want Apache Commons ver uh, version 1.2 versus right. 1.4. Right. So, so as as I said this morning, there, J Jigsaw does not attempt to solve the multiple version problem, which is is a really hard problem. Uh, there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, you know, high level summary: if if we did, you probably wouldn't like it, at least not with the tools that are available now. Um, all, all of the tools that we have are tightly oriented towards you know, really trying to get only one version of anything on the class path, right? It's gonna take fundamental changes to Maven and other, uh, the other build tools to move beyond that so that they actually convey more of the module graph they actually compute and allow multiple, allow multiple versions. Um, we also chose not to put versions into the module system uh, at this time because it's really critical for adoption to be able, for people to be able to use the tools that they're familiar with. And guess what? Maven, Gradle, Ivy, you know, every, every tool that deals uh, with jar files today has some way of doing version selection, some way of doing conflicts. They're all different. The heuristics they use to resolve conflicts are all different. If we actually had a, a version-based resolver in Jigsaw, it would, you know, it would piss off some large group of people because it would be different than at least one, maybe two of the major build tools. 
uh, and and that would just be a huge barrier barrier to adoption. So it ha it has been a it has been a bit of a controversial decision. People think, oh, module system, you must have versions, and well, no, we don't. But we 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 chose that in order to increase its approachability so that people could use it sooner rather than later. Eleven minutes left. Uh, sorry, uh, with the same uh, reasoning of the versioning. And you said that you can specify a version in the module, right? You, you, you cannot specify a version in a module. You cannot specify a version. No. All right. So, uh, so basically, you can have just one version of a module. You can, you can have one version of a module in any particular layer. In any particular so if, if you're if you're in a more sophisticated application and you really need to load different versions of things you can spin up layers to do that and the API is actually quite simple so you know the, if you if you're doing doing a plug-in architecture you're writing you know something akin to an application server you know doing fancy things with stuff at, at, at runtime uh, you can you can load different versions but we but for now at least we've left that to the API I'm not sure I'm not saying that we will that there will never be versions in this module system just that right now it didn't make sense from an adoption standpoint so I got a quick question so you, you've put the modeling in the sort of uh, is it like the source level of the code right mm -hmm. so if someone goes and adds something you have to go back and put, add something to the list of modules that you're using Let's say someone goes back, refactors code, and takes something out. Is there any instrumentation that's being planned, or are you expecting that to be in the debugging that says, hey, you've got this extra piece in your modules. You don't really need this. You can get rid of it. So you I, can sort of keep a nice, clean module system, shall I say. Yeah, I, 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 I fully expect the, you know, the, the IDEs and other tooling in, in, due, in due course will offer that level of, of, of advice. All the information's there, right? You can, you can easily, easily tell when, uh, when you're exporting a package that has no, no classes in it, for example. Um, you, can, you can identify when one module requires another but never actually uses, at least statically, any of the types in that module. So maybe that's a requires that you don't, that you don't actually need. So you know, just as we have tools that help clean up imports and stuff like that, I, you know, all, all the foundation is there for, for tools to do quite a bit of, of analysis on modules. This is against, again related to the versioning thing. Wouldn't it make a bit difficult for the CDCI process when you don't have a versioning? Like I need to have a live version down my Nexus and then I need to do another module. And how would you handle this scenario? It has to be packaged to another module? I'm, I'm sorry, the what process? You used an acronym I uh, didn't recognize. Now continuous integration or continuous de deployment oh, process. Okay. Like one click continuous integration, it moves on with a snapshot version, right? In my perspective. Right. If you're using Maven or something. So if I'm developing two different modules, one module is already live, and I want to update that module, and versioning is not supported. Right. So how would you handle this scenario? It's, it's up to your build system and your, and your CI system to, to update the module artifacts as needed, just like they do today for jar files. So I'm not sure I see a problem here, but maybe I don't understand the question. OK, so module system. Okay. I need to think about it. I'll come back to you. I'll tweet you the okay, question. Okay, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll be around. Catch me later. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, hello. Uh, could you go back to the, to the graph, to the module sure. graph? There we go. Uh, like... For example, I want to use Java SE dot EE. Uh, yep. Can I also exclude a module like nope. Corba? Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. SE dot EE require, requires Corba. If you don't, if you don't really don't want Corba, of course you want Corba. Come on. <laughs> if you don't want Corba, then well, ju just you know, don't require the SE EE module, but do require Java dot SE and Java dot XML dot WS. Um, and java.transaction and anything else that only Corba was pulling in. So sure, you can do that, but you know, okay, we, so we, 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 take a, we take consistency really seriously. If module A says it requires module B, we're going to go find a B, and if we don't find a B, it's a, that's an error. Sure. And what are the, like, uh, the colors, the color coding of the arrows? The color coding of the arrows is 
Um, a, a blue arrow means there's an API dependence. So uh, the, in, in the java.sql module, it exports packages that contain types and, the ty and, and those, those types mention types in the java.logging module. The gray arrows are, are, are either a pure implementation dependence uh, or it's an arrow into java.base because everything depends on java.base and it would be boring to make all those arrows blue. Is, you know, is, it, is it the optimal design? No, probably not, but it's what's there today. Wait on here. Wait, wait for the mic, please, so that the recording makes sense. So, if uh, if you would export a module that you don't export modules, you export packages. If you declare a module, declare a module that has an interface, and that's everything that it decla declares. So, an, so in, in, interfaces are a, low, are a lower level thing. An in interface your is a type. Example, mm -hmm. you would just uh, declare a padder interface. You would not actually implement it. Would that be possible? Oh yes, yeah. In in in, in the in the little text module, padder could have been an interface. There could be an in, an internal class that's either say package private or maybe in another package that's not exported that provides the implementation of padder padder. Padder, yes, and and that Padder interface could have a a handy default method in it, say that could go get that instance. And would you would it be a, uh, an idea to do it as a separate module implementation? Would that be even possible? Oh yes, you, you you can totally separate interfaces and implementations. You can have interf uh, you can have a module full of interfaces, an another module with implementations of those interfaces. That that all just works. Yep. It's aerobics, it's good for you. <laughs> um, so how would you recommend to move from Java 8 to Java 9? Um, with, with care and deliberation, just like any major release. <laughs> <laughs> so so there, we, we, we put, in, put in lots of tools to help with this because we know, we know it's going to be uh, a, a problem. One, one, one fairly recent addition is there's now a, what, what, uh, what we've informally called the big kill switch. So we know that, that there's a lot of code out there that, uh, that accesses internal APIs that are no longer exported, so, so that's an illegal access error. The, the, the flag is creatively called dash dash permit dash illegal dash access. Uh, you, can, you can run with that and, and the module system is essentially turned off. Uh, but it's still there enough that it can report error messages so you can find out which, which bits of code are accessing internals um, and we've, we've tried to make the error messages as descriptive as possible so you can go figure out, okay, you've got a class path full of you know, dozens of jar, jar files you got off central. Uh, you can now, you, the, the diagnostics will tell you, you know, which jar file has code in it that's, that's as, accessing which internal API. And we strongly encourage you, go report a bug against that project and ask them to fix it. Or if you have some time on your hands, submit a patch, uh, submit a pull request, whatever, whatever it is that they want. Um, so that, that's, that's one, one useful tool for, for migration. One other question I had was, um, I haven't thought this through, so apologies if it ends with me getting uh, stoned at the end. Um, with you, you've now got these it's dependencies. It's been good for you too, good. Yeah. <laughs> So with the dependencies you're now setting inside the module file, was there ever a discussion about getting rid of the import statements? Uh, why would we get rid of the import statements? Because the import statements still tell you the dependencies that your code has at the class level. You could oh. then say that you don't really need that because you're setting that at the package, well, at the uh, uh, library or package level. I, I, think there, I think there's, yes, you, you could, you could in, the compiler could in a sense in, infer what all of the imports would be based on the requires, but I think there's still value at the level of, of classes and interfaces to control what's coming in just to keep your life sane, especially if there are things like, you know, like class names that are duplicated. You want to have some amount of control over that. And the, tool, I mean, the tooling supports, has, has supported import statements for years, IDs, fill, fill things in for you automatically and, 
it's it's not that not that much of a burden. So. Uh, <clears throat> just to uh, make sure that I understand it right, uh, you export the packages from the model from the yes. declaration of the model. Does it mean that you uh, from the uh, model that uh, depends on that model see only the interfaces exactly that are declared in that right. package if, and if, if, right right if if module A requires module B and B has a package in it then code in module A can only use the classes and interfaces in that package if B exports that package if B does not export that package so that suppose I, you have the interface that you have internally and you don't export that one. It means that you use that internally. Yes. You, you, you implement that one, and that, but yes. it's not visible externally. Well, no, so, so careful. It's not, not only is it not visible, it's not accessible, which is a much deeper guarantee. Vis uh, visibility is a very weak guarantee. Uh -huh. Can you, in the same model uh, info declaration, uh, declare several models? No. No. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, a module declaration declares on, only one module. These different exports, you understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, yeah you, you can export many packages. You can require many other modules. Mm -hmm. um, there's also provision in the language for, for services, but that's a, that's a more advanced topic. But yeah, there's the, you, can you can certainly do those kinds of things. All right, time is up. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I'll be around later if you have questions. <laughs>